order. Remind council of the conflict of interest if it arises. Um, we have, uh, if you have your cell phones with you, make sure they're on vibrate or muted. And uh, for the moment of silent reflection, I just want to put our send our thoughts out to uh, Derek Jeffs and his family um, with the sickness of their daughter. I hope all goes well there. Um, we have uh, minutes from the regular council meeting of May 4th. If they're all in order. I'll look for a motion to uh, approve them or receive them. Moved by Councillor Webb and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? Carried. Okay, so we'll go into the, uh, the delegation. Michelle Brigetti, um, school parade uh, for the students. Uh, is she on here or is it just a telephone call, Bianca? No, I think she's on video. Is she on video? Okay. There's... Okay, here she comes. Good morning, Michelle. <clears throat> There we are. There we go. Good morning. 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 Good morning. Um, welcome to your delegation for this morning, uh, Mel. So, uh, if you wanted to uh, update us on the parade, you were thinking. I sent the plans to Bob. So, uh, Bob, I've kind of shared the route, um, what our plans are. We are go moving forward with tomorrow for the parade. Um, we've had two staff members kind of drive through the route just to kind of test um, a lot for safety, uh, making sure we're going to hit a lot of families. So that's kind of noted on the route, kind of turnarounds and stuff. Ray has generously offered to have a fire truck at the front of it, which is exciting. Um, it will be a lot of people, so probably about 30 cars. Um, we're going to meet um, at the school, get our cars decorated, and then proceed to the start of the route. Um, we're going to have um, Stephanie Racine, one of the teachers, right behind the fire truck. Um, she's going to have a walkie, and I'm going to be midsection of the group. And then we're going to have another teacher at the rear with a walkie. So trying to keep in contact so that we don't cause too much traffic and too much stress in the township. So we think we've pretty much covered um, all seven of our buses, um, getting past most of our families. Um, just to give a wave, um, the families have been told probably through three emails now to practice social distancing, um, stay on their front lawns or their driveways, and only be standing with people that live within their homes. So we're hopeful that they will follow that. We've also told them um, that staff can't take anything from them. So we'll just be waving and continuing past. Sounds really good, Michelle. I know I took part in a birthday party on Saturday. We did a little parade through town uh, with balloons and everything. It seems to be the, the norm right now. Um, yeah. So I think it'd be good for the kids to have a little bit of like they'll see their teachers if they can. And uh, yeah, uh, it sounds it'll be good for them. They've been cooped up a long time. Yeah, they have been. And us too. We're missing them for sure. So yeah. Um, does council have any questions or concerns? Uh, um, now's your chance. Councillor Ellis. Uh, good morning, everyone, and good morning to Michelle. Good morning. Um, when we first got the email regarding what you're planning, um, I thought, <clears throat> off the top of my head, first thing was a good thing, uh, kind of an uplifting thing for, for not just the kids uh, and the teachers, but probably throughout the municipality. Um, after about a 10 minute thought, after replying to Bob saying, yes, yes, I, I gave it some second thought. And I don't like to uh, put uh, water on your fire and parade, but um, the first thing that I thought of with all the direction and what we've been asked to do within our municipality, our businesses, the residents themselves, uh, the direction from the province and the minister, uh, the, uh, the uh, public health um, directions, um, social distancing, uh, no more than five people in crowds. And we've, we've uh, adhered to that for 
um, a number of different businesses uh, telling them no that are not allowed to do. Um, as far as sheer parade and organizing cars, um, I guess that's what kind of had me buy into it right away was, well, we're, we're um, not concerned there, but when we start to organize a parade and, and bring it up through town, uh, and I'm not sure what your route is, but uh, that's where I started having concerns. Uh, we're a long way from being out of the woods with this COVID-19 stuff. We don't see as much in a small municipality, but all you gotta do is watch the social media coverage and it's around us still. Mm -hmm. And what we're all hoping is that we don't see even a second wave of it. We're in uh, a tourist area. There's a lot of people here now from, from uh, with out, of, out of our municipality coming to our municipality. And um, I, I've got to say, I'm not in favor as much as it's a nice thing you're planning to do. Uh, I'm not in favor for all those reasons, out of respect for the businesses and the residents who are adhering to uh, what we're asking to do, um, out of respect for frontline workers, for an example, what they're being put through in order to try to maintain and prevent this uh, nasty disease. So for those reasons, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I'm not in favor. I think we're just a little premature down the road. Those uh, things, uh, the parade and other things that should be planned and will be planned at the, at the proper time. Uh, I just think we're just too premature to try to control a crowd through the village of Havok. A parade just automatically draws people as much as you try to um, distance, as you say. But um, that's my fear, and I'm sorry, but I'm not in favor. I mean, that's okay. I respect that, right? Um, I'm just looking for other direction. I see people waving their hands. So yeah. I don't kind of the protocol on this platform. No, you can finish. We, we did support it as a, as a majority of council. It's just some have some concerns. And right. we have something similar happening with a, um, a car show that we approved. Um, same sort of thing. It's going to have cars going through and uh, probably could create some uh, pooling of people, but we hope not. Sounds like you put a lot of planning into it. I'll pass it over to Deputy Mayor Giroux and then uh, Councillor Pomeroy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Michelle, for coming this morning. I'll start by saying that uh, when I received the email from Bob of my thoughts on the parade, of all of Council's thoughts on the parade, uh, I too thought it was a uh, Pretty good thing. Um, but I was concerned with the, the fire department being involved. I mean, our chief, uh, Ray Haynes, is uh, one of the most community-minded people that I know. He never says no to anything that involves the community. But as a volunteer fire department, we're stretched at the best of times. And I don't want to put our volunteer fire department in a position where we're out on a parade when we're needed someplace else. Now I know what the fire trucks participate in parades of all kinds, but in those parades, we know in advance, probably a month or more, where the parade route is, what's going to be involved, it's a set designation time, and so on. But I didn't get any information from the acting CEO. I got two emails. One was my thoughts. The other one was the praises on Wednesday. So in between, I was left really in the dark of any of the organization that went on, and then apparently there was a lot of it. So there are concerns for me other than the fact that, other than some of the facts that Councillor Ellis has spoke to, if the neighbors don't know that this parade is coming down and if there's a lot of noise, I mean, we do have shift workers in our municipality that had no notice of this. Some of them could be frontline workers. So I know you did a lot and I know that I don't have the authority to talk, stop teachers from driving by people's houses, students' houses, and showing their support and respect and wanting them back to school. 
there are other things to take into consideration here. So uh, I guess I can just leave it at that and say that I think uh, as a council member, I was disappointed that I didn't get a lot of the information ahead of time and uh, I'm not in favor of it. Okay. Okay. Um, Councilor Pomeroy. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor and Michelle. Um, our premier has set down a mandate for what we're supposed to do and what we're spo not supposed to do. And uh, it's advertised on television every night. We have our MPP, uh, we have our uh, warden, which uh, Deputy Mayor Jarrell and, and Mayor Martin have uh, supported the, the county. And I think if you get the message right, he says, stay at home. Um, we have to do a lot of business with the province of Ontario. And uh, if we want to keep getting grants, we can't just uh, turn around and, and start to set our own rules here. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, like that's, that's the way I'm looking at it as a business thing. And I don't want to jeopardize our chances of, of receiving grants because we want to run our own government the way we want to run it, not the way that it's mandated at this time. So I can't, I can't support it at this time. And furthermore, we, we can't even have the, the kids go in the park and play. Like it's not permitted for the kids to play in the park. There's, there's so many things that people are, are trying to adhere to. And but anyway, I won't go on and on. I just can't support it on, on the first grounds that I talked about. Okay, Councillor Webb, I saw you put your hand up there. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I'm kind of stunned here by the reaction of uh, some of the other members of council, personally. Um, pretty sure we voted last week to uh, open boat launches, have fire bands. I'm pretty sure the Premier opened golf courses. And now we're telling kids uh, and teachers they can't have a parade in cars to our township. I, I'm somebody please explain that to me and where we got the power to tell them that they can't do that. As you said, Councillor Pomeroy, the premier doesn't have the power to issue an edict to tell them not to drive around in their cars and have a parade. It's I, a suggestion. I think, uh, I think, I think a lot of these people have got a little bit of power here. And what's being taken advantage of is that power. We should step, step back and look at really what's going on here. We have a bunch of teachers, a bunch of kids who have put a lot of organization into this. They're not just running, gonna go out and jump in cars and drive around in like a, a bunch of banshees around the township. I, I, Ray's muted, maybe Ray could, could, could have a comment on how many times he's been contacted or the contact he's had in the planning of this. There's been a lot of planning put into this. And I think it's I think it's completely ridiculous to to throw out the you know like I said it, our boat launches and everything else were open this weekend, but these kids can't have a car or the teachers can't have a car parade through through our township. It's and I, it, it boggles my mind. Hard. It's okay for council to feel the way they do. It's just because we don't have any say in this anyway. If the school wants to do their parade, they didn't even have to ask us. The fire truck part of it there is something that needed to come through council, but as far as the parade, it's happening all over the province. And my whole point, my whole point, Jim, was when I started off was how how can they vote to open up boat launches and go along with the rest right. of the stuff that's open, and tell tell these people that they can't do this. There's so a real right. there's so a real good. dichotomy in terms of their argument. Okay, Art, but that's uh, so everybody has their opinion here, and and like I say, the school didn't have to come and ask us. They're welcome to do whatever they want. They have their board to deal with. And it's happening all over the province. All the schools are doing this. So it was nice that she came to us. And it's good that they're putting a lot of planning in it. And it sounds like uh, they're going to do the right thing. Um, as far as the fire truck, that's something that Ray can talk to council about is, um, you know, as far as if, if council is not comfortable with the fire truck going in it, um, we can reach out. Maybe the OPP could lead it off or something like that. Uh, um, but as far as this parade, I think it's a great thing. It'll be good for the morale for the kids. Um, you're right, everything's opening up today. 
Um, we're going to have to deal with something here. Hopefully not what we're, you know, in two weeks here. I hope things are still a little bit subsided as far as the virus. But uh, right now, um, we did support it a couple of weeks ago in principle. Um, this, the fire truck is the only thing that we have any say in. So um, as far as the principal and her parade, I, you know, personally, I think it's a great thing. And uh, um, everything is opening today uh, as far as golf courses. Everything's opened on the weekend. Things are starting to ease up and the kids are getting stir crazy. I've seen it with this three-year-old's eyes when we went by on Saturday. So um, anyways, uh, Bob, you had something and then we'll start to move on here and we'll talk about the fire truck part of it. Yeah, through you, Mayor Martin, I just wanted to uh, to address the concern uh, expressed by Council with respect to the sharing of information. Um, this this idea, Principal Borgatti and I had a, initially a telephone conversation roughly two or three weeks ago uh, when the idea was proposed. Uh, I suggested that uh, an email be sent and at the time suggested that Council be approached formally about this. Um, there were two dates in play at the time. One was before the council meeting and one was after the council meeting. And as it turned out, the selected date was after the council meeting, at which time when I learned that, I suggested to Principal Borgatti that she come to council to discuss the parade and address any possible concerns that may be there. Um, the final route, I believe, now, correct me if I'm wrong, Principal Borgatti, I believe the final route was just finalized yesterday uh, and I forwarded that to uh, Chief Haynes. Uh, so that was that was just that was just supplied to us yesterday. Yep. Um, uh, uh, teachers drove it through on Thursday and um, we had a few little hiccups to work through and I've worked with Constable Nye around the logistics of it, trying to ensure that we can travel safely in the spaces that we're traveling, right? Our intention really is just to reconnect with families. We're only at about a 30% engagement rate right now in learning. So we're hoping to kind of see some families and hopefully to kind of jar the, the parents into trying to support some more learning, right? We're looking at six, possibly seven months out of the learning platforms and we're concerned for our kids, right? And we wanna just make sure they're okay. And if I may, uh, Mayor Martin, uh, just further to that, the suggestion for the fire truck actually came from an, uh, an original email from one of our council members, um, which I forwarded to Principal Borgatti in the original emails that came and circulated. Um, and, and since that time, there's been some expression of concern about that. So hence the conversation today. Uh, so I just want to make council, I, I, I hope council can be assured that all the information we were aware of was in fact shared. Yeah, that's good. It's, uh, so you mentioned Constable Nye um, helped you on Thursday. Is the OPP coming into this uh, also then, Michelle? So um, he has, is sharing uh, the information with the, the OPP that are working on um, Wednesday. If they're able to come, they will, but obviously their commitment is to community safety, right? So he said he's sure they'll join us, but can 100% commit. Okay, and that's, uh, so that's our concern. I, like council said with Ray, um, we've been stretched pretty thin here in the fire department. And I don't know how long your parade is, but I understand it's a pretty large parade as far as you're going through the township and everything. It's not just town. No. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, that might be something that we can have some discussion later about. Uh, um, of course, Ray has to be comfortable with. Uh, he does. Say, he doesn't say no. Um, so that's. Uh, but if he stretched too thin, I'm sure he'll let us know. But uh, I will reach out to the OPP later to see if they're going to be taking part. Um, that would they have a few more people than we do, as far as for you know, no matter what, if it's got flashing lights, the kids will like it. So right, yeah. Um, Councillor Ellis. Yeah, just one last thing. Um, I was wondering if uh, Michelle could just give us a quick overview of the route that would be in the village. Um, is there a way to share on here? Can I share the route? Is that a, a funny question? Sorry, oh, I, saw okay. Bob, I saw you giggle. Yeah, just one moment. I have the route open. I can, I just, I'm not sure how to use the program. 
<laughs> Michelle, if you look on the bottom bar, there's a share screen button. Yeah. If you click that, it'll let you select which screen you'd like to share. Okay. And it will show for all of us. So it doesn't show the stuff I have open at the bottom. Can I click on? I it guess it makes it easier. Just a verbal walkthrough. If it's fine, I'm curious. Okay. Um. Yep. Just let me get. It's like five slides. So. So we don't do the in town stuff till the end, which will probably be closer to one o'clock. So from twelve forty till one, we're going to be traveling west on George Street. Then we go left onto Quebec, right onto Ontario, and then right on Anne, right on Donald, left on Union, right on King Street, right on Oak Street, left on Matheson, and then we go right onto Victoria, and left onto George, and then left onto Park, and then back to the school. Oh, yeah. So, so the plan, the plan for to control um, probably groups is there's some some part that the teachers are playing in helping control that. Well, the teachers are going to stay in their car because if they get out of their car, they're going to be swarmed by children. I would guarantee that. So we hadn't included the teachers getting out of their cars because that was our concern. Well, I wouldn't expect the teachers to be out of their cars, but my, that's my concern is in the village. I know if you're driving in the country roads, uh, Joe Blow lives here and Sam's down there, so no, no big groupies um, or gatherings, but that was my concern was in the village. When you're going to put a parade through a village, uh, how, how you're going to control people getting together and we, we we refer back to the director of uh, public health and the uh, province saying no more than five people. I'd, that was my concern was the village and how you're ever going to control um, groups of people. I, I think we thought if we go down like the variety of streets in the village, we have a better sense of control rather than just going up Highway 7. We don't want them to group. So that's why we're encouraging them through emails um, and the platforms the teachers are using to stay on their driveways, their front porches. We're hoping they're going to follow social distancing, just like the premier is hoping that we're all following the rules right now, right? So Does it's it hard because we don't have the control over what parents choose to do at this point, right? We have groups in town right now, Larry. They stand in front of home hardware. They stand in front of food land. They're there every day. We don't go down and break them up. Well. And I can't disagree with you, uh, Councillor Webb, but um, enticing more activity is to me. Oh, I, I understand your concern, Barry, but uh, like I said, Michelle and, and the people, I have confidence in them. I think maybe I've dealt with them a bit more than the rest of council, but I know they're thorough in their preparation and they wouldn't put themselves and especially these kids that they work with, they wouldn't put them in a situation where they thought they'd be exposed. So you know, that's just where I'm coming from. So. so the parade route's up on the screen now. Yeah, I see it here. Um, no. Again, I'm, I'm not going to carry yeah. this on and on and on. I just think that uh, as a municipal councillor, I have a responsibility. And it, to me, it's premature. And down the road, all these good things should happen. But I think we're premature. We're not out of the woods by any means. It's around us. We just don't see it. And uh, I think we're premature in doing this. So I lost everybody off my screen here, but I know Barry had his hand up there. And, and what I could say here, Michelle, is I will reach out to the OPP today. And if they, could, if they could lead it and they see an issue with crowding or something in town, they can ask the people to uh, split up the same way they did all weekend with campers and boat fishing tournaments and all these things that happened this weekend. Um, they did an excellent job this weekend. So I'll reach out to them and see if they could take care of if they lead the parade and they see an issue where people are grouping up, they can tell them to split up and go back to their own homes or, you know, and practice the social distancing. Um, 
they did really well this this weekend. So, um, Barry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to reiterate, Mr. Mayor, to what you said before. Even if council does not support this, Michelle and her group can go ahead and do it anyway. They don't need our support. Yeah. So, on that note, I would like to make a motion that uh, we don't give the um, parade our support as a council. Just as a council, I'm not saying that any other way, and uh, that the fire department not be involved neither. So that's my motion. All right, we have a motion on the floor there, Bob, and I'll look for a seconder. With a comment. Deputy Mayor Durrell. I, I, I do want to change <laughs> Summary's uh, motion, but we don't have any control over what the teachers do, and I stated that in my my original thoughts this morning. But uh, I do support his motion on the fire department. I think they're running enough thin. We haven't asked Ray's thoughts yet, Mr. Mayor, but the motion's on the floor for that part. But I will second. So you're seconding? Can you? you so Barry's motion was not to support the parade. You're supporting. You're not supporting the fire chief going in it, or you're not supporting think, the parade either. I don't think it matters whether we support the parade or not because we don't have any control over that. Right. That's uh, so Barry. You might want like so. There's two different things here. Uh, um, the parade part of it, Barry. If you want to say about. Council supporting the fire department going in it. That might well, be. I'm not, I'm not supporting township and in being involved in it whatsoever. But if okay. Michelle and her group want to want to go ahead and have the parade, we have no say in that. And I just and probably in my own mind I can support it in one way or another. But as I said before, we have too much at stake here with the interior government and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna go into any, all that again. I no. just made a motion, I got a seconder, maybe. Yeah, uh, I just don't know if that seconder is for the same motion, but if, if Dave, do you second Barry's motion? Yeah, see where it goes. Okay, mover and a seconder. Oh. Um, can, I, can I ask for this to be recorded vote? Sure. Okay, Bob? Yes. So do you want to call it out? Yep, just one moment through you, Mayor Martin. So the motion as moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Deputy Mayor Giroux is that Council does not offer its support to the school parade and that Council does not permit the use of the fire truck in the parade. So I'm just looking around my screen here. I'll go top to, top to bottom. So Councillor Ellis. Bob, the hard thing with that motion there is that's what I'm saying. You got two separate things. I can totally understand about the fire chief and the fire truck, but so I can say that I'll support that, but I don't, I do support, like the school has their own thing with the parade. If they want to do the parade, I think it's a great thing. Um, I appreciate the work they put into it, but the fire truck thing could be an issue. So by putting them in the same motion, you're, it's not a fair, uh, a vote there because I do support the parade, I just don't support the fire truck. So if I say yes, it, you know what I'm saying? Sorry. Through you, Mayor Martin, the um, perhaps unless Councillor Pomeroy wishes to amend his motion, that that is the motion on the floor. So it's not for the fire chief right now. It's only for the parade. Um, because well, I, 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 I grouped them together, Jim, as a township. I don't want our township involved as a council what you do on your own that that's great you know like you i could probably support it but not as a council member as a government member i can't support it and i can't support uh ray going in with a fire truck that that was my motion okay well okay can we, can we hear from, no just can we can we hear from ray before we you call this because we've sure. talked about him and but no, he, we, nobody really let him comment. Yeah, Ray, you want to finish up this before we we got a vote on the table here and uh, it's just 
it's a tough one here because it's got two things mixed up here. Go ahead. Personally, I have no problems with putting a truck in. I would just put one truck in it with a couple of guys in it just so basically they have somebody to talk to as they're driving around. If any calls come in, the truck would just leave the parade. Um, as for the route, yes, it's a long route, but it's really not out of the way, if that makes any sense. Like you're not going that far north and you're only going down towards Trent River. So really the truck is quite close for any calls and it would just, like I said, if a call comes in, it leaves the parade. I don't have any issues with it. All right, Terry? Yeah, and I think uh, my council makes a decision, Ray has to abide by it. So therefore we should call the vote. Okay, so I'm forced to, or you go ahead, start off with whoever starts off there, Bob. Well, what, what's the question? Is it both or just one at a time? They're leaving them both in there. So it's, okay. uh, so okay. you have to vote okay. how you want. Yeah. It's, it's a shame, Mayor. That... Okay, so through you, Mayor Martin, the, the motion on the floor is that council does not support the parade, the school parade, and that council does not endorse use of the fire truck in the parade. Recorded vote was requested by Councillor Webb. We will now call the recorded vote. Councillor Ellis. In favor of the motion. In favor of the motion. Deputy Mayor Giroux. In favor of the motion. Councillor Webb. Against. Mayor Martin. Against. Councillor Pomeroy. For. The motion is carried three votes to two. So Council does not endorse the parade nor the use of the fire truck. So Michelle, I'll talk to the OPP and see if we can get some support for you there, and okay. uh, um, and that'll help you, you know, have somebody at the front of your parade. Okay. I apologize, Michelle. That's that's okay. That's fine. We just want to do what's best for the kids. That's well, good. You can still do all your work. I think Council's wielding a bit more power than they actually have. Okay, we'll carry on here. Um, thank you, Michelle, for uh, coming in today and uh, listening to us. All right, thank you. Take care, be safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So we'll carry on with the meeting. Um, motion to, re we don't need a motion there, Bob. We had uh, a mo motion made, right? Do you want a motion to receive the delegation? Oh, no, it's fine. It's All right. Fine. Okay. Um, we have staff reports for information here. We have uh, one from John uh, with the building department and Wendelin for treasurer update. I'll look for a motion to receive those uh, reports for information. Councillor Ellis and Councillor Webb, all in favor? Carried. Okay, we'll move into staff reports for follow-up. And Ray, we have... Uh, one there for your uh, replacement vehicle. Um, yeah, so the purpose of the report is for the replacement of the truck, the fire chief's truck um, that I'm using. Um, the recommendation is that we go with JJ Stewart's there. The only thing with the whole thing with is nobody can give me an actual delivery date on this vehicle. Okay. That didn't come with it? Uh, I phoned them. I asked them both, the JJ Stewart's and Scott Drummond's. I asked them both for a delivery date. Neither one because the business or the manufacturer's not open, and they had nothing on their lot, so they say that would meet the specs. Okay. All right. So it's, an, it, it's an ordered truck, and like I said, they can't give me a, a date, a delivery date on it. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is that going to create a problem for you, Ray? No, because um, the, the truck that I'm using now was going to go to the parks for the um, um, students and stuff like that. And as far as I know, the students aren't coming. So everything's kind of just floating along the way it has been. So we'll just make do. I didn't know that wasn't happening. So thank you for that. I don't think they're coming. No, we only have one. That's uh, that was agreed at 
few months ago as far as yeah. no no new students yet. So that could change in the next couple of weeks, the way things are going, but uh, okay. Um, so we have a recommendation here. Um, is there any more comments on the on this tender? So um, the recommendation is that, uh, that we uh, purchase this uh, truck from JJ Stewart. Um, somebody want to move that? Moved by Deputy Mayor Giroux and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? That's carried. Okay, Ray, so we'll see where it ends up and when we can get it. Okay. Maybe, they'll find, maybe they'll find one off the lot somewhere that's close. Can they do that or does that have to be ordered? As long as the price is there? As long as the price is there, we could just, I'll talk to um, Mark over at Stewart's and we'll just see where, where it goes from there. And it's red. It's red. <laughs> maybe yellow. <laughs> yeah okay all right thank you um next we have uh a report from peter with regards to church road and um uh, this is timely because i've noticed it myself peter so uh um if you would like to go ahead oh, we lost the sound there peter if you're not muted so We never tested you out. So Bianca, is, is that, uh, you're muted too, but uh, Peter obviously has an audio problem. I think so. It's not coming through very consistently. You may need to call in. Okay, I can carry it for you if you like Peter as far as, uh, or Ryan. Um, it's, I think he's both had some discussion on this, Ryan. Ryan, hey, hey everyone. Uh, yeah, we did have a discussion about this, and uh, that's unfortunate that Pete's uh, audio isn't working there. Did you want to keep trying there, Bianca? Or uh, we can if he wants to call in, or maybe his volume's down. <laughs> Good luck, Peter. <laughs> Technology is just the greatest when it's working. So, uh, yeah. So I did talk oh. to Peter last week about it, and um, this this came up when the Smith Quarry was first developed. I got reading this thing over the weekend, and um, all the back roads and everything aren't supposed to be used uh, um, by the from the quarry and they are starting to get used on roads we weren't expecting um church road is one that's uh getting a lot of traffic and uh you know did you get it working peter am i there now yeah, yeah. yes there yeah yes exactly uh thank you mayor and uh, it was not only just uh, the Drain Brothers Excavation Company, uh, we noticed there was Windrums, there was uh, quite a few other uh, trucking companies that were using that road, and, and uh, we have had complaints in the past from the residents on the road uh, for traffic and dust uh, control, even with our calcium being spread, but uh, that road in, in, uh, was just not designed uh, for those amount and, and the heavy trucks that are going across it quite regularly. So. Um, I think it would be a, a great avenue if we could post that as a non-heavy truck route uh, just between the two county roads, 44 and 46, uh, to save our road and uh, some, save us some maintenance and cost uh, on that section of Church Road. Yeah, after reading your report, Peter, it was the thought that there is a couple other roads that, like we did upgrade uh, North School Road. and. I don't know if there's any signs on there, but as a precautionary note, it might not hurt to get a few extra of these signs around that quarry, um, just to remind people that they're not truck routes, they're, they weren't designed for that, even North School Road. So um, I'm not sure if you've got some on that road, but if you're ordering some, it might be a thought to, you know, to put a couple around that area, just so people don't get the urge to do the shortcut. Definitely, yeah. So there is a recommendation on here uh, um, that we approve this. I don't know what council's thoughts are. Terry, go ahead. 
yeah, I um, I have to go along with Peter. I go out and do a lot of driving every day so, because I don't have much to do. And I cover a lot of township roads. And uh, it, it does pound the heck out of it. And we, we've mentioned this before, way back when. And uh, I'm glad it's addressed here now because I'm, I support it. Okay. Uh, any other comments? If not, I'll take a motion uh, to approve. Councillor Ellis? Yeah, just a motion to approve the recommendation through you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, moved by Councillor Ellis and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. Any other questions? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. So, um, Good to see you on here too, Peter. It's nice to, <laughs> we haven't seen you much. No, thank you. Yes, it is good. So, okay, so the next uh, report is uh, um, from our treasurer, Wendelin. Yep. Um, Mayor Martin and Council, this is t another report to extend what we've been doing in the past with the COVID emergency and not charging penalty for the 2020 taxes. And we had a previous um, resolution that it would go up to June the 1st, but then we have our next installment due um, at the beginning of June. So I'm looking forward for council's um, acceptance of waiving the June 6th uh, installment penalty and the monthly penalty for 2020 taxes on July the 1st. Things seem to be slowly opening up now. Some people might be more employed come the July 1st. So, um, you know, it might only have to be extended to that time. And then we'd have to reevaluate it again um, in June to see um, what the province is doing for opening back up uh, certain employment um, options. So open it up for comments or questions. So I think the June 6th installment is gonna be a telltale of how people are uh, dealing with this. And uh, I think you'll have a better feel for it uh, after that installment. I don't know what the percentage was of people that paid for the the last installment, but that one was kind of a different thing because a lot of people were prepared for it. Uh, so yeah, I totally agree with what you have here. And I know other municipalities are doing the same thing. Some of them have taken them up to August actually, but uh, I think you'll have a good feel on the July or June 6th installment to see where, uh, where things might be going and you'll have a better feel for it. But uh, what's council's thoughts? Barry? Oh, I have to agree with what Wendland has here, and I, I agree with you, Mayor, that uh, she'll have a better handle on it and be able to bring us back the, the facts and figures here because we, you know, as she explained in the last part of her of her statement or report here was the payments for the school board, the county, and, and Crow Valley. We got to make sure that, you know, we're, we're getting the rollover of money in for to uh, for to cover these. So, yeah, I think the county's got their stretched out too, haven't they, Wendelin? Yes, they do. Where are they at? What's, I should I know, I don't have it on the I believe they moved it September, but I'm not sure if I'm confusing that with the yeah. uh, a school board okay. or not. And just a quick comment on the last installment. Um, quite a few paid that last installment because that was at the beginning when COVID was happening. So we only really had 200 accounts more than normal going out in um, arrears notices. So okay. we were very lucky uh, with the last installment. Okay. Councillor Webb? Yeah. Um I agree with everything that was said there by Councillor Pomeroy and Wendell. And I just think maybe we should look at it right out to the end of the year. Because um, the way I see it is you might even see uh, a substantial number of people pay here uh, this round in June because the government checks have gone out. Where I think you're really gonna see the pain start to come is in the fall and into the winter, especially when businesses here 
you know, close back down or go into seasonal mode again. So I think as a township, we should, I know that's a long way to look out, Wendelin, but I mean, if we can kind of grasp that, like the scenario I would say is, let's, let's say that we have to waive the penalty on everything right to the end of the year. And then how would that affect us and what, would, what could we do? Now, I, that's not what I'm saying we have to do now. I'm just saying, looking at the economy, and if this is really going to drag out as long as they say it will, people aren't just going to start coming back and going to work in a month or two, mm -hmm. especially in restaurants and things like that. A lot of them won't even reopen. So we should be prepared for that. Yeah, so that's so the July 1st one might be a totally different report, um, or the next meeting might be a totally different report after the June 6th uh, installment date. But uh, um, I, the I, other... Yeah. I think you're, you're more liable to see a drop, say, in the September, October taxes than you are in this next round. Okay. Any other comments? So, so right now the recommendation is that uh, um, we waive the installment penalty on the June 6th. So, uh, and also the July 1st. And the July 1st uh, for the 2020 tax. So. Uh, if we get that through, she may have an uh, opinion after June, but uh, if we go with the recommendation here right now, that'll uh, um, she can evaluate it better um, going forward. So if somebody would like to move the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Ellis with yes. a comment. Oh, okay, and uh, seconder? Seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? So. Okay, Wendelin, so you can keep an eye on that. I know there's a lot of numbers juggling around. Everybody's, you know, trying to figure out how we're going to come out of this thing on the other side. And um, there is a lot of things coming forward from the, the government. So uh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. So, um, okay. Well, thank I'll you. get that posted on the website and I think I should be able to get it within the Havelock rail as well. I think okay. I have till today to get some other information. Yeah. Okay. All right then. Thank you, Wendelin. Uh, Thank you. With that, we'll move into correspondence and uh, um, no action items. So there is uh, several things in there, or a few things in there. Um, the PCAD uh, first quarter report, if you've read it, it's really dated because it was first quarter. And if you watch the numbers, they just bottomed out near the end. There was lots of interest in January, February got less, March got almost tanked. So uh, um, she said the report, unfortunately, that's what happens when you do a quarterly report. Uh, the numbers reflect what we're into right now. So um, other than that, uh, um, and the garage sales were strongly uh, discouraged. I don't know, I read something this morning about one with the lions. I'm not sure what that was, but uh, anyways, uh, Hopefully it was it was done. There is some ways of doing it. Some of these people are trying uh, different uh, different me different methods, but right now it's strongly discouraged because it will create crowding. Um, I know Norwood normally on the long weekend has all their yard sales, and they were worried about it. So, with that, if you get a motion to receive the correspondence, uh, unless you have any questions or comments. Um, anybody want to move it? To receive. Deputy Mayor Jarrell moved it and seconded by Councillor Webb. All in favor? Carried. Okay, we'll move into the activity uh, report. Um, as I catch up here. So with that, uh, list of activities that uh, and there was a report from the cemetery board uh, attached is there any questions or anybody like to add to their activity uh, report there councillor ellis yeah just uh, the one from the cemetery board is for council's information and um, basically for to help um, the caretaker and the board control some of the items that are usually a, a little issue there. You stop uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, the cemetery uh, caretaker is looking for feedback from uh, people that visit if there's issues. It's uh, 
it's meant to be a help the book the new sign so uh, for council's information there okay dave's gone to the bar um <laughs> so <laughs> anyway uh okay thank you uh larry yeah that's uh hard this this uh um, doing all these things by uh, video and that it's really been a challenge and uh, we're doing pretty well I think at keeping things moving a little bit. Uh, Councillor Webb had his uh, economic development meeting. Bianca helped us do that last week. I don't know if you have anything to tell council there um, Hart or? Uh... Yeah just a couple things quickly. Um, we First time we met since um, Brian's left us so uh, Bianca I guess is just stepping in for the moment to fill his position, uh, a few things we talked about. We did the video for the CIP, um, the promo that had um, Tanya and JJ Hudson and Russ and Dot Carnes in it. As a part of that, we discussed doing a second video. So um, just kind of took poll the committee on whether or not they wanted to move ahead with that. Um, everybody seemed like they did. So we're gonna track down the company that did the first video for us and try and move ahead with that. We had um, Tracy Bertrand from PK Tourism join us for the meeting. Um, a lot of COVID talk. Um, one thing she did talk about, I we were asking about the sign program, the county sign program, wayfinding program or wayfinding sign program. Sorry, that was supposed to be coming this summer. Um, she informed us due to COVID that those funds have been uh, rediverted to uh, aid in the COVID business relief. Um, so we won't be getting those funds or probably moving ahead with that sign project this summer. However, Tracy did say that um, that funding will be open again come uh, winter or early spring next year. And uh, we will, she will be applying again for it for HBM. And she says that, um, and God willing, that um, if we apply again, we probably should get it next year. So. Um, a little bit disappointing, but hopefully it's only a one-year hiatus and we can get moving with the sign program. Um, a lot of the other discussion was in terms of COVID relief. Um, just so the rest of council knows, um, as I said, Bianca has been kind of filling in for Brian. She, uh, Tracy informed us of a, a there's a portal um, through PKAD, which makes it easier for local businesses to gain access to the literature and whatnot they need to get this funding. So uh, Bianca has been busy emailing that out to all of our businesses as well as making paper copies in case anybody needs them. And um, I don't know, Jim, is anything that I forgot? Or there was a lot no. of COVID, a lot of COVID talk. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, no, you covered it all pretty well there. Yeah. Uh, and so. just and not to not to not to be a bummer or anything, but um, I think because she works uh, Tracy Bertrand I'm talking about she works on the front line of this every day um, a few of her comments were uh, very sobering um, they they had a study that said that they thought that between 23 and 30 percent of the small business in in our county might not return after this so um, they're very concerned about the situation and um, working hard every day to uh, try and limit the effects of this and um, help local businesses so as I said, we're all, it's always uh, nice to have Tracy join the meetings. Yeah, thank you, Art. Um, Deputy Mayor Durow. Yeah, um, I did not go to the bar, Mr. Mayor. I went to the library <laughs> alarm off. It kept dinging in the background. <laughs> um, in our e, give a verbal on my uh, EOTA report. Um, we were we had a successful Zoom meeting uh, last Thursday. Um, all uh, board members except one were able to use the Zoom. Uh, one party did not have the coverage, so they used the telephone, which uh, worked out quite well. And uh, trails are all open. Um, we're doing exceptionally well compared to some in the province. Uh, I think because our we have a multi-use trail system and the government saw fit to let the people use that while still practicing uh, social distancing while the COVID-19 is amongst us. Um, so we've been pretty fortunate. We have 
actually our construction never stopped. We have completed the uh, construction and repair of two bridges on the Callenford East run. Uh, so they are completed. They were in hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of work that's been completed over there. Our, um, our grants are still looking very, very positive. Um, the people, uh, those responsible for in, in the government that, uh, that report to the ministers are telling us that they're, they're very positive. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, the Minister of Heritage, Sport, Tourism, and Culture is taking uh, this two grants uh, in particular, taking them on as a priority in the Investment in Canada Infrastructure Program, the ICIP, which is a couple of million dollars, this grant, in their rehabilitation and uh, renovation stream of the federal government. So she's taken that to the federal government herself for her support. So on a whole, we're doing very well. We're in the first steps of negotiations with CN Rail in the northern part of the province in the northern side of Algonquin Park down through to the Quebec border. So we may be creating trails there in the future, loose trails. Um, I have been appointed to a working group um, in the province. I accepted that uh, appointment. And it is um, in regards to our strategy moving forward with the uh, Recreational Trails Ontario Coalition. And this is, uh, has been going on for some time, but we, we've come to a working group now throughout Ontario to um, proceed in talks with the Ontario government to have a one pass system across the provinces. Mm -hmm. Multi, uh, multi passes for different regions. It would work similarly to the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Club passes. So, um, it won't affect this council or my abilities. It won't, it won't take up, hopefully, any. I won't let it take up any time up from the council, but it is an important step for EOTA and the rest of the province. Um, so I would imagine we're going to have our first Zoom meeting in June, at the look of it. So it's an important step. And it, and it just reminds me of the multi-million dollars of tourism that, that is going through the province on trails that don't quite reach us yet. So there's hope for us in the future, I think, in Peterborough County. So we're doing well. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Barry. I skipped over you there. You had a historic water protection meeting last week on the 14th. Is that anything from that? No, uh, until I get the minutes back, Jim. Okay. All right. And then with mine there, uh, once again, tons of conference calls. Um, last week, uh, Minister Monsef was talking about the grant system that's going to start rolling out. Uh, some of it's maybe add on to the ones we've already applied for. Hopefully we get the answer for them because some of them sound like we might be able to tag on, um, you know, the one that we did uh, um, in phases there. Maybe we'll be able to apply for the second phase before we get approved for the first phase. I don't know how that's gonna work, but uh, I think things are gonna roll out over the next uh, two or three weeks. It was still early when she was reporting it. She was just telling us it's coming and be ready. So it's kind of, a message to all of staff that uh, you know you might want to um, start thinking about anything that would be shovel ready because a lot of these these things have to be completed by 2021. So uh, <laughs> um, I don't know how that's going to work, and that may change uh, when it does roll out. But there was some things there with uh, regards to uh, retrofits. Uh, one of them is a resilience. Uh, a COVID-19 resilience fund, and I think a lot of that's going to be with grants to do with things like uh, 
changing some of our buildings and retrofitting them for uh, to prepare for COVID-19. So, you know, be it screens and things that we have to put up, it might be something to uh, keep an eye on. Um, and uh, I don't know, yeah, that's, it's once again, it's gonna be another thing that unfortunately we said at our meeting before everything went down that we're gonna have some uh, shovel ready projects and try and get that going. And uh, I don't know where we're at with it, but uh, they're gonna start hitting us here soon with some more grants to get the economy going. And, and hopefully we have some things that uh, um, we can do uh, to, to move forward. Dave Smith met with him a few times and uh, most of it last week at the end of the week, everything went crazy um, as they started to open things up. And uh, on both sides, once that message came out, then the phone started ringing, uh, you know, and all the associations reaching out about boat launches. Marinas were totally upset that it happened on the long weekend. Um, they were hoping the 19th was the real date. So some aren't opening till June 1st. Um, in other townships, ours aren't rushing. And uh, Belmont did a really good report last week and told them the priorities. And it was to go along with the provincial statement to get people to the island properties. Uh, um, and uh, and then it broke down. And the fishermen weren't the concern. I, I get a laugh reading some of these things from people worried about the rock markers. I know we posted it, but we're not the Trent Severn waterway. We don't have to put markers in. I don't know, Dave can correct me if he wants, but uh, the concern that people have, those things are, the associations take it on and put them out there uh, and as a courtesy, um, but it's not something, they're all volunteers and they're doing the best they can. So um, I think they will have them in over the next week or two. Most of them had some in, but not all. So they were kind of warning people to, to watch if you're out on the lake, but, uh, um, so, and then the OPP, uh, they were busy this weekend, uh, campers, uh, again, uh, Ray got a break this time. That's one thing I did tell the people that were calling that, uh, um, enjoy this because we didn't have to call M and R this weekend. The police did sit and watch the people pack their tents up and leave, um, several areas, the same hot spots as, that we have in our township, three or four spots that, uh, People were ordered out, and uh, um, the other problem was a fishing tournament that happened on Round Lake, and it must have been an all-night fishing tournament, so the people were upset in waking at 4 o'clock in the morning. Once again, police, I told them, call the police, and I haven't heard a report back on how that went, but uh, um, it's been good that we haven't had to bother Ray to other than for fires and when they raised the fire ban on Friday it uh, got him off the hot seat. <laughs> Anyways, uh, um, with that that's about it. There's uh, every week I'm sure they'll start to settle here soon but every week there's at least uh, half a dozen or more uh, conference calls and the video ones are a lot easier to handle than the, the phone conferences but uh, um, Bob did sit in on the OPP one. I don't know if he had anything to add there, but uh, was there anything more, Bob? No, through you, Mayor Martin. I, I don't think so. I think those meetings have been uh, have been very thorough, and uh, they've been very useful. And it it's been good to coordinate with the other townships uh, as best we can. We've tried to coordinate messaging, and coordinate the activities as we go forward. So it's been very good that way. Um, and going forward, as we, we slowly rise from this crisis, we will uh, attempt to continue to do that. Yeah, okay. And, and we did do, I know Dave was at the, on the, uh, he's a member of the Round Lake Association. So he was on that uh, meeting with, they, they did their AGM by uh, Zoom. Um, so I did the report like we usually do uh, and told them that normally council would all be there. Unfortunately, and it went it went pretty well. Um, now the other associations are looking at doing something similar. I'll be talking with them hopefully uh, over the next week or so. I have reached out to some of them, and uh, we'll see uh, how it goes. They're they're all talking about trying Zoom meetings. Uh, they might even do them on weeknights. Uh, <laughs> um, 
so as long as they don't conflict with all the other ones it's uh that's how i think they're going to deal with things this year so just trying and they're doing lots of social media so um with that uh, that's all i have to report uh um if there's any questions if not i'll uh, move on to uh other business or written or oral notice of motion, I guess. Sorry about that. Is there anybody that had any uh, oral notice of motion? I haven't seen any written. Bob? Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin, if we could just get a resolution to receive those. Okay. Motion to receive the uh, council activities, moved by Councillor Ellis, seconded by Councillor Pomeroy. All in favor? Carried. Okay, and, and I didn't see any written notice of motion. Is there any oral notice of motion to come forward today? Seeing none, we'll move into other business. And uh, so with that, uh, Councillor Pomeroy, um, you had some things there? Yeah, the uh, first one, I, I picked it up from an old one there. I'm going to go to Ryan for an answer on this. It closes on the old Norwood Road. Um, do we still have? those hoses and are we still paying rent? Uh, no, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the hoses have been returned. So they're no longer required for that. Okay, okay. Well, I was looking back at April the 6th, I think, and it was it was mentioned in your, in your report. Um, now the sewer technology report, maybe Bob, have you got something for that? Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, we did receive a, uh, a summary report from sewer technologies um, it was a statistical report so we've we've requested that they provide a, a written summary of, uh, of that statistical analysis something that's in plain english so all of council and and staff can understand it so that will be forthcoming okay thank you and through you mr mayor um could we get maybe aqua involved in this because <laughs> you know we we do pay them for for all this and uh, we haven't heard much from Aqua in the, in the last while. I, I understand why, but. Um, okay, would... um, I'm sure they are involved, but Ryan, go ahead. Well, I'm just gonna, just gonna add to that. Uh, we have been in uh, constant communication with Aqua through all of this and they have offered on several occasions to come and do like a, a presentation and have a meeting. So. They're excited to do that. They're looking forward to doing that for us. Uh, it's just been challenging um, getting that coordinated through uh, with everything that's going on. So um, yeah, certainly they are looking forward to meeting with council as much as we're looking forward to meeting with them. So, Thank you, Ryan. And uh, further to that, there's been a lot of activity down at the well. I wondered if you could maybe give us an update what was going on down there. I see sorry. a lot of their vehicles there. I'm sorry, whereabouts? Down at the well in the park. Yeah. Um, well, they're they're just been doing a lot of uh, different adjustments and things like that um, with the new PLCs that are there. So um, there's no there's nothing uh, there's no issues to report there or anything. They're just doing their regular maintenance stuff too as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, the other thing I had down was the tender process what what do we do for tenders like I, i'm what i'm insinuating is uh the last time i mentioned the old building at on quebec street there that we purchased and evidently there you, you might have got a price for to take it down for to dismantle it so I wondered, you know, did it go to tender or did we just invite someone or? Yeah, so through you, Mr. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, we did obtain two quotes, two written quotes for that project. Um, uh, we went with the lower uh, price, of course. Um, the scope of work was sent out to uh, both, uh, both uh, companies for that work. So um, yeah, so the dollar amount didn't exceed the, uh, the uh, 30,000 where we'd have to go to the official tender. So uh, three written quotes was acceptable in this application. Yeah, okay, thank you. But it's just kind of a, nice to be informed and you know how much it's gonna cost to take it down. 
as a, you know, as a council. Um, the other one was uh, the daycare lease. What are we going to do there? Because you know we're we're getting really cramped in our own office. We have space downstairs. Um, it's not being paid for. Well, it is, but it isn't like it wouldn't pay for the hydro probably. And you know we could utilize that for maybe one of our departments. I I don't know, but I mean I would leave that up to to Bob to decide. You know what what could you move over there and and take the the strain off of off the uh, off the main office. So I did talk to Kathy last week. Uh, I met her there. They were going into the into the library or into the basement. Um, I was out looking at the pathway on Quebec Street. So um, anyways, when I ran into her, I told her that we wanted to get together with her to discuss the lease as soon as we can do it. Um, again, it's just the challenges of trying to uh, um, meet when you're, nobody's together at this time. We can do it by video, but it just doesn't have the same effect. They are using it right now because they have challenges because the school is closed. So they've had to use the kitchen in that building and they were doing something else. So um, I guess that's something we need an update on, but she's more than welcome to uh, talk about what challenges they have because they lost a lot of space with the school as far as there's no storage area or meeting room. Um, and the cost of doing the meetings over there are a lot more expensive than um, even renting one of our buildings. Not that one, but even I suggested other buildings that they could use. So we will have a discussion here as soon as uh, things uh, loosen up here. She gave me her cell number and uh, I told Bob that we'll try and set something up that we can uh, understand exactly what they need. But she, she would like to work with us and uh, um, explain to us some of the challenges they're having with this new school thing um, because there is uh, it's not the same as uh, what they had and it's not as accessible right now because of the school closure yeah well, for you mr well to you mr mayor i think we should act on this fairly soon because if i remember the, the lease agreement you know it, it says something about a year but i would like to be able to break that lease because if we could utilize that property for our own staff at a much lesser cost than it is for the rent that they pay there could they you know rent space somewhere else that, okay. that, that's my point yeah and you're totally right and so you know they've been there this long and um so it's just we're trying to work with them it's it's a small community they bailed us out we were on a, we didn't have a daycare thing around here so i hate to get pushy with it it's uh and but she's she's totally understanding and and maybe by the next meeting we can have some answers of what they're looking for or maybe we can help them with some other area um to store their stuff whatever but uh um things are loosening up we're going to hear more on daycares today um from the province so uh let's see what happens today and then uh see what we can do as far as for the next meeting Okay, thank you. Okay, Bob. Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin, just briefly to that, uh, my understanding is the uh, the Premier uh, will also be discussing uh, school openings mm -hmm. perhaps today. So I don't know what kind of timeline and I don't know if schools and daycares uh, will open up at the same time or connected. I'm not sure about that, but apparently there will be some sort of a, an announcement regarding that today. Yeah. That's, uh, um, yeah, that's all over the board right now. The last I heard that the grade 10, 11, 12, they would like to see them get a little bit of time in school before they move on. Um, so I don't know, today will be interesting to hear how far they're gonna go with it. So if you could bear with us, Barry, uh, we'll get something here to grab it for the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, okay next we had, uh, Councillor Webb, with regards to large article garbage pickup, special day. Yeah, I just wanted to throw this out there for Council's consideration. Over the past year or so, I've had a few people approach me with this idea um, in terms of trying to maybe clean up the town and the township. Uh, so I guess what the proposal would be would one day a year we have the, the white, what do they call it, Ryan, the white thing of the dump? 
Yeah. For quite good today, we have. So is proposing a similar thing, but instead of like your big appliances, it would be so if you had a couch or a mattress or whatnot, maybe one day a year, like I said, we could waive a fee on that. Just, just as a trial in terms of, I'm talking, I, I, you know, I live in town, so I see more of it in town, but the mattresses and the couches and old chairs and stuff that's either right on the sidewalk or laying around in people's yards, just sitting there rot, rotting away. Um, I know it's not really our responsibility to go and clean up their yard, um, but I'm hoping that maybe, you know, if we throw this out there that we can get a little bit of it cleaned up and maybe some of these people actually take some initiative and follow. I would try to clean up the town. So I'll just throw it out there. I thought it was an interesting idea. I know there'll be a cost to it. So, I mean, I'd have to leave it with Ryan and, uh, and, and public works to kind of investigate, you know, what the challenges of this would be, but I just thought it might be a neat idea. I'll just throw it out there and let, let everybody have a go yeah. at it. So are you talking the whole township? Well, and that's what I mean. That's, uh, you know, I, well, I guess the proposal would be, yes, the whole township, but I mean, in terms of the collection, so, and what I was thinking was say for older people or whatnot, people that maybe can't haul a couch to the dump, right? So obviously that would be a bit trickier in the township, but I mean, it, I guess it would be, you know, kind of a waiving of the fees for anybody in the township if they want to take stuff to the dump. The same for the town, but I meant if we had older people or somebody that needed help, we would provide them some kind of help with getting it to the dump. So. Okay, it sounds like a budget item as far as trying to get the cost of what it would be, because you'd have to get a contractor in to pick this stuff up, and uh, I don't know how you deal with it. I know they have something. Well, and, that, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. Maybe it's just a waiver, a waiver of the fee at the dump, so it's it's up to them. But what I'm more concerned with is trying to improve the appearance of our community. Okay. I don't know about the rest of you, but I hear a lot of, you know, and it's not just the town, there's places in the township that need to be cleaned up. And we've done what we can through kind of clean yard bylaws and the rest of it. But I'm hoping to kind of maybe spur a little bit of initiative here for people to take pride in their community in terms of what their property looks like. So. Yeah. I think I've seen Larry there. I'm not sure, did you put your hand up, Larry? Uh, just a comment. Uh, in the past, we've always ran the white goods, and so that's your large appliances. Um, we've had the hard plastic, three days or three weeks. Um, and I believe the county, if I'm correct, I think the county, the county play a part in that for cost. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking for Bob or Wendlin. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, the, uh, I know the, uh, the hard plastics, for example, that's a county initiative. They take that. Uh, and typically in the past, these, these types of initiatives have been county initiatives. As yeah. well as the white goods? I yeah. believe that's correct. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's one of the things that takes quite a load off, as Councillor Webb indicates, uh, some of the areas that need to be attended to uh, for appearance items. Uh, also, as a comment, our bylaw enforcement um, man that we've had in the past work, um, uh, he's done a fair amount of good things. I see it more so in the, in, out in the township where it's, it's a time consuming thing, but eventually uh, the, the disaster areas um, slowly get cleaned up. But, uh, Anyway, the, the, my point is the county play a role in this. Yeah, yeah, they do on as the market calls for. Like as far as like like the hard plastic was a there was a market for that. Um, they have stopped doing that right now. Um, go ahead. Yeah. So depending on what happens with COVID, whether we can open up our uh, transfer station to to accommodate the white goods or the hard plastic or a uh, free day for, for couches and mattresses or whatever else would be, um, I guess would depend on what happens with COVID. Yeah, and I think the, the couch thing, uh, if you get into that, there's no market for it. It's just the haulage and how many bins we're gonna take. So if we were to allow for 50 bins to go, I don't know what a bin costs 
uh, to go to Peterborough, but uh, basically, I, it used, I don't I don't want to put staff on the spot, but I, I think it's best to refer this to staff, um, see what we can do. Um, you know, the white goods day did take care of a lot of that stuff. As far as couches and things like that, if there's a, we, we should have a cost for it and uh, bring that forward. It's a good idea, but there it's probably a huge cost, but go ahead, Wendland. I, I was just going to say, I agree with you. It's a budget item that would have to be researched, but I know some other municipalities will um, have tickets that you can buy for um, a fall cleanup or a spring cleanup, and then you buy your large ticket item ticket, and then it allows that item to be picked up. So it may not have to be a free gratis type thing, but it would have to be researched. Okay. Okay. Um, so maybe hard if you wanted to make a motion that we refer this to staff as far as uh, to look into what it would cost to have, and maybe work with the other municipalities on how they do a large, large item pickup. Yeah, and I apologize to council for the timing of this. This is probably, this isn't a time sensitive issue. Um, yeah. Probably uh, something that, you know, might not be done until next year or the year after. It's just something that I, I threw out there that I thought might get something on the agenda that wasn't COVID related. <laughs> so. I think waste is going to be a big discussion over the next year. So uh, um, we've, I've got a couple emails from the weekend about our COVID response to waste sites uh, that I haven't really answered back yet. So um, I think it's good discussion, Hart. And if you Thank want you. to refer, okay, well, I'll, I'll just make a motion. Refer to staff to uh, look into the large item. Uh, is there a seconder for that? Councillor Ellis? All in favor? So, okay, carried. Okay, thank you, Art. Um, so with that, uh, that's the end of, uh, um, there's no bylaws. So I'm just gonna look for a motion for the confirming bylaw to move out of this before we go into close. Um, so moved by Councillor Webb for the confirming bylaw and seconded by Councillor Pomeroy, you're throwing me off here. All in favor? Carried? Okay, and a motion to adjourn uh, this public meeting. Moved by Councillor Pomeroy and seconded by Councillor Ellis. All in favor? Carried. Okay, Bianca, so you'll send us out another email for the, for the closed session? Yes, I'll send that right out. Okay, thank you. Um, so we'll resume in five minutes or whenever we get the email. Thank you.